There are 318.9 million people living in the United States. 12,756,000 of those people identify themselves as gays or lesbians, gay, bisexual, transgenders. And while LGBT issues have been receiving more attention in the past decade, not all of the attention has been positive and left the issues unredressed. One of these issues is conversion therapy. And we're going to end the harmful practice of so-called conversion therapy. <laughs> of so-called conversion therapy. Conversion therapy. It's a topic that's come up a lot in this past election and in recent years. But what is it really? To answer this question, we turn to some experts. Conversion therapy has to do with changing from someone uh, from gay to straight, usually is what it means. It never means the other way around. Um, and usually that's done in the context of some kind of a group therapy uh, thing. There's usually always some kind of religious backing behind it, meaning that there's converting into a religion, more specifically. And the third piece of that is reparative therapy, which takes a more psychological approach to conversion therapy. Conversion therapy is not about praying away the gay. It's an emotional torture against our most innocent citizens, our children. In fact, according to the American Psychological Association, sexual orientation was unlikely to change due to sexual orientation change efforts. These psychologists don't consider it a therapy because there's no scientific evidence whatsoever that conversion therapy is useful or effective. In fact, there are, there are no scientific studies that indicate that there are any positive benefits from conversion therapy. And yet despite this, both reparative therapies and ex-gay ministries persist. In fact, sexual orientation change efforts have been around since the 1800s. First, Do No Harm, California's LGBTQ population report, reads that early and more extreme attempts to change gay men's sexualities included electroshock, lobotomies, and castration. And while these techniques aren't in use by modern practitioners, conversion therapy and its roots are still harmful. So I think that the harsh practices that go back for you know decades, trying to force someone to be something that they're not can be incredibly damaging to their development as an individual, to their relationships with others, and can really put um, additional stresses on their life that will cause harm across the spectrum of their, of their development. While these therapies have dangers of their own, their existence speaks to a larger problem concerning the safety and acceptance of LGBT youth, or rather, the lack of that safety and acceptance, which has serious consequences. The world in which LGBT youth are growing up can often be hostile toward assumptions that people make about LGBT youth. It was the same place of they were so uncomfortable with being gay in their social environment. 9.9 .9 times out of 10, there's a religious element to this. Regardless of whether there's a religious element or not, there's an overwhelming sense of shame being who you are because the environment in which you're raised says, this isn't right, you're not living up to your best. They never seem to be who they're supposed to be because there's a kind of like what I went through, just, there's this feeling of something is always wrong with you. According to the Human Rights Campaign, highly rejected LGBT youth were more likely to experience depression, attempt suicide, use illegal drugs, and be at risk for HIV and STDs when compared to those who experienced little to no rejection. At a really basic level, just love your child. And not only tell them they can be whatever they want to be, but also tell them they can be whoever they want. So they, they can have the opportunity to define their own gender identity. They can have the opportunity to define their own sexual orientation. Rejected youth need protection and acceptance. Of course, we as individuals cannot change every environment, every mind, but 45% of LGBT youth feels their state government isn't accepting of them, and 34% feel the same way about their local government, both governments meant to protect them and their rights. Some states, of course, have recognized the harm of conversion therapy and of supporting it. Conversion therapy is illegal in California, Oregon, Illinois, Vermont, New Jersey, and our capital, Washington, D.C. But five states out of 50 is not enough. So we ask you, our Congress and new president, to take on the urgent issue of conversion therapy and ban this harmful practice in 2017. We ask you to stand up for America's LGBT youth and in doing so, take a stand against bigotry. Take a stand alongside our nation's capital. No minor should feel left behind or forgotten because of who or how they love and all minors should feel protected by their government.